Andy Mock joins us now. He's a research senior research fellow at the Center for China and Globalization. Andy, great to see you as always. Glad to be with you. Well, I want to ask you about a recent headline here. The U.S. Commerce Department just revealed that it is building two big semiconductor manufacturing hubs in the U.S. by 2030, part of the CHIPS Act. How has this push inward by the U.S. impacted how China is viewing its own semiconductor manufacturing industry and self-reliance when it comes to tech? Well, I think it certainly shows that uh, China's views uh, about the importance of uh, self-reliance has proven to be correct uh, with the U.S. weaponizing the semiconductor value chain. But at the same time, I think we're also seeing that the challenges the U.S. Uh, is facing. So one of the very large uh, semiconductor investments is in Arizona by the uh, company TSMC, which has a leading position in advanced semiconductors, uh, largely because of its location in Asia and the ability to take advantage of a highly skilled, hardworking workforce uh, uh, enmeshed in an ecosystem of suppliers. And some estimates have shown that TSMC's Arizona plant cost is costing more than four times as much as a comparable plant uh, in Taiwan. So I think there are challenges, but at the same time, uh, China is right to and must uh, do what it has to do to protect its own uh, industries and to ensure that the world has access to uh, semiconductors. Adding to that, Andy, this week, uh, President Xi discussed the importance of research. He says basic research and dedicating more government support uh, in this area. Talk to us more about that. And uh, is it partly because we haven't seen as much cross-country cooperation when it comes to research and development, especially because of COVID? Well, I think certainly uh, the last few years of COVID uh, were a factor, but that's really more of a, a short-term issue. I think the larger structural issue is this. Um, it wasn't that long ago uh, when China still was, well, not still, but was uh, relatively poor and had to focus on other issues. So it made sense that a lot of technology was imported. Um, and as China uh, prospers and becomes a more advanced society, and given its size, the size of its population, the size of its economy, I think it's inevitable uh, that China devotes more resources to basic research, uh, not just um, on the application product side. And that really is the foundation uh, to become a technology uh, great power, even superpower, while at the same time, of course, increasing economic security, and I think making the world a safer place from a technology perspective as well. You know, we've talked a lot about homegrown tech, homegrown talent. Um, what is China doing to engage more young people and even children into pushing them into STEM and to tech? Are there more programs in schools and activities, extracurriculars? What are you seeing with the younger, younger generation? There absolutely are. And I think, uh, you know, one of the unique strengths of the Chinese uh, governance system is the ability to uh, integrate different capabilities to achieve uh, larger national aims. So uh, education at all levels from primary school, even earlier through university, graduate school, postdocs, so all play a vital role here. Uh, in this. But I think it's also important to point out that this is built on a very powerful foundation. So China, of course, has a very strong Confucian legacy that values diligence, um, attention to detail. And this, I think, positions many young people to succeed in STEM. Uh, you know, the, the view is slightly different than in some countries in the West where people believe you're born smart so you can become a scientist. I think the Chinese slash Confucian view is you have to work hard, study, and you can achieve anything. And this, I think, is especially vital uh, to many disciplines in STEM, that discipline, that commitment, um, you know, that ability to just grind it out until you master something uh, in conjunction with these new policies, I think position China well for the future. Andy Mock, always great to get your take. Thank you for joining us from Beijing.